Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today, we are talking about freedom, and we are going to get into this subject a bit more uh, because we are noticing in the spiritual realm that so many people are still bound emotionally, physically, and spiritually to others, okay? When I put together the three-part message about celebrating independence and just enjoying the fact that God has released uh, you if you fall in that category, um, that was one of those encouraging messages to keep fighting the good fight toward freedom or just enjoying the fact that you are free from certain people, places, and things. Now, we still have that group there that is still struggling, they're still battling, they're still crying, they're still complaining, they're still putting out money um, toward uh, undeserving uh, people and projects and so forth. They are just bound, okay? But they make excuses for being bound in these situations. Now, some of you all may have come across people like this where you gave them a bit of advice and that advice was free. Okay, that was the whole purpose was to give them an exit plan out of a situation to give them all sorts of tips, tricks and everything else to manage um, a difficult circumstance. And when you did that, they gave you the eye roll. They came up with excuses. They said, I mean, really, you're not completely free out of your situation and you got the nerve to tell me something, you see. So they gave you attitude. Um, they came up with excuses. They started bragging more about the one abusing them. And you're standing there looking at them like, wait a minute, this person is abusive towards you. Why are you making excuses? Why are you defending them? You just gave me a long speech about how you can't stand them, don't like them, don't want to be around them. But yet when I give you right, the advice you shut me down. You don't like what I'm telling you. You don't, you are not ready to go and do the necessary work to get free. So then of course, after a while, what do we do? Eventually we stop giving them advice. Um, the Lord will move on us to go somewhere else to deal with others who, um, will listen and obey according to the will of God. Okay. Because you see a lot of these people, they pray behind closed doors and they're not expecting God to show up through us flawed human beings who don't have our stuff together in every area. They're expecting something, something that's angelic, some type of, uh, <laughs> group that has it all together. But they don't realize that God will use broken vessels. He will use people that are works in progress. He will use um, the person that might not look like they have it together, but mentally and physically they are free. Okay? A person who is enjoying his or her life, sure they have flaws, but they're still enjoying his or her life and they're happy and they're just... Re, you know, rejoicing in the fact that God has delivered them. Well, I think that they have enough knowledge to at least show you the door. Okay. They have enough knowledge to show you what your exit plan might be um, because they're free. And sometimes haters are going to hate. They're going to look at the fact that that person, well, they don't have enough money. They, you know, don't have a good house or, or a nice house or a nice car or their family is this and their family is that. And so they judge them and they're going behind closed doors, um, talking to others about, you know, she got a lot of nerve or he got a lot of nerve telling me what to do. But what about what about? But you prayed, you see, you prayed or someone around you prayed. And they wanted some help. They wanted God to show up and show out. And so when God does it, then folks are criticizing the way God does it. Okay. Um, there's no sense in shooting the messenger. I have an audio coming up about that sort of thing. Because truth is going to be truth. Whether you will swallow truth, respect truth, um, do something with truth. Truth is going to be truth. It is everlasting. It is unchanging. God's light is still going to show up. Um, folks are still going to be offended because they don't like the messenger or they don't like the delivery or it could have been more this or it could have been more that. But let's get back to 
the binding situation, shall we? The emotionally and physically and spiritually binding situation. It's still there. No matter how much you criticize, no matter how much you don't like this person or, you know, you don't like the fact that they know this or they know that. Okay? That situation is still there. It's an elephant in the room and it hurts and it makes you angry and, you know, you want to pull your hair out possibly. Um, you're still trying to figure out what you're going to do next. And I will be the first to tell you, stop trying to figure out every little itty bitty thing. Okay? You'll drive yourself crazy. Instead, what you do is you spend more time in prayer. You spend more time fasting. Some of you all didn't even bother to fast. I mean, a three-day fast with some crackers and some juice or some soup or just fruit or just vegetables and lay off the hormonal meat for a while. Okay? So that you can get some kind of perspective as to what your next move is going to be. Some people sleep far too much. So, of course, they're not thinking like they should or they're not sleeping enough. And so, once again, they're not thinking like they should. Basic things that the body needs, the human mind needs, the spirit needs, they are neglecting themselves. And it isn't any wonder why I can't hear from God. I don't know what's going on. What am I supposed to do next? And blah, 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 blah. Well, I'll tell you what you need to do. I've already gotten into briefly the fasting portion of it and there's plenty of audios and you know things that can help you in terms of prepping you um toward that sort of thing okay i even have um one dealing with the 40 day fast for some who are called and that one is intense but i will tell you that the end result of that type of fast oh it lasts forever in a spiritual realm I mean, the blessings, the visions, the signs, the wonders, I'm still um, reaping the benefits from a 40-day fast that I took back in 1997. So, you know, this is serious. This isn't anything to play around with. When you want God to do something and do something fast, then get ready. Get ready. I do believe it may have been 1998. <laughs> but... You know, it, it. the point is a spiritual fast is definitely going to um, help um, cleanse the mind, the body, and the spirit, okay? Uh, the other thing, if you are feeling like you are just not getting anywhere too fast when it comes to whatever your situation might be, is check out the people, the places, and the things around you that you keep um, allowing into your life that are distractions, if I'm trying to get from point A to point B, why do I keep sitting in front of a television screen that has a bunch of worldly stuff on it that you know God doesn't approve? You're not living the type of lifestyle that is even welcoming the presence of the Holy Ghost. You're not doing the types of activities that would even uh, move on God to want to do anything for you because, you know, some folks are still in that whole satanic type of um, philosophy and um, all these different laws of, you know, um, attracting this and attracting that and, um, you know, sacrifices that one makes that just so happen to be evil or ungodly, you know, they're still wrapped up in all of that worldly types of thing, things. So you want God to operate, though, in all of that mess? No, I, I will be the first to tell you it doesn't work. I've been there. I've done it. I try to incorporate in the past, um, different worldly philosophies, um, watch different shows, uh, try to escape situations mentally by entertaining myself much. Um, eating was a comfort for a hot minute before I realized, no, nah, I can't carry this weight around. Um, what else? There were a lot of things that I did rather than deal with the situation at hand. And that's what the mind will do. It will want you to run away when it doesn't want to work. Now, when it wants to work, next thing you know, you're doing everything you're supposed to do to free yourself out of something, um, to feel good once again, to do what's right and all of that. But when the mind is saying, this is not important right now, um, or I'm not really in the mood, um, maybe it could be just stomach upset or something somebody said and then the next thing you know you're not even tackling anything okay 
And this happens for a while for some folks. We're talking about months, even years. And then one day a light bulb pops on and they realize I've got carnage around me. I've got a body count. I've got um, a cage that I've um, built, whether literally or figuratively, around me. I'm miserable. I'm angry. I'm bitter. I'm confused. No wonder people treat me like they do. No, ma no wonder I have all these losses around me. I'm losing my mind. Some folks are literally losing their mind because they can't see and they can't feel anymore and they can't hear um, the things of God or the people of God because they have continued to feed themselves via all sorts of ungodly entertainment, via all sorts of ungodly people places, things, you name it. So I want to do what's right and I want to be free from a relationship or from a job or from um, a group or from some weird thoughts in my head or, you know, some toxic folks, whatever. Okay. But yet I keep allowing myself to be fed by all sorts of demonic inf uh, influences. Okay. And you say, well, I don't know necessarily what might be demonic. Well, that's why you're supposed to be in your word. But people told me this and people told me that. You're still supposed to be in your word. It doesn't matter what people have told you about the Bible. It doesn't matter what your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your co-worker, your best friend, or anybody else thinks about the Bible. When we're walking with the Lord, when we have decided that this is what we want to do, we want to enter into the paranormal, spiritual, you know, what have you, whatever you want to call, you know, the Christian experience. Um, that means that we can't bring everybody along with us. We can't bring old thoughts. We can't bring negative, you know, criticism and, you know, all of this other stuff with us. So some people, the reason why they can't get ahead when it comes to spiritual things and they can't help other people and they end up being pew sitters. OK, maybe a little service every now and again is because they are just don't want to believe wholeheartedly that God is going to help them out. That just seems so far-fetched. And, you know, I can't see God, and I've got a lot of stuff going on, and I don't have time for all of this, you know, whatever, whatever. But maybe if I just sit in a pew, but you're not reading the Bible, and you're not entertaining any type of discussion dealing with the things of God. You don't ask questions when you don't understand certain things. Um, you're not willing to give up anything in your life. You know, that is keeping you emotionally and physically tied to someone or something. How long are we going to keep talking? You know, some people, they love talking about the fight, the struggle, what they don't like. They're venting, they're complaining, they're crying, they're bitter, but they're not willing to do anything at all. Lord Jesus, come on now. They're not willing to do anything at all. You might be that one. Every time somebody tells you to go do something, you say, I can't. Oh, my God, I don't want to do it. Ah, oh, I don't have enough money. Ah, oh. okay, well, then why do you keep complaining about the knuckleheaded boyfriend then? If you don't have any intention of moving out and getting away from him, stop complaining then. But I just want somebody to listen. But uh, he's emotionally abusive or he's physically abusive. Well, I got plenty of audio on relationships. Please, please, Lord Jesus, please go over to <laughs> those audios. I can't stress that enough. If you are that one still in the mess, I will tell you that I have put so many people in God's hands and then have proceeded to go ahead and be used by him as a mere vessel. That's it. That's it. Just a mere vessel. There's no special titles. There's no special accolades. There's no special group affiliation. You know, there's just me and God. Now, you know, over time, God has connected me with different folks who are positive, praise God. And he has delivered me up out of situations that could have led to me being put behind bars. OK, um, there has been times where God has come to me and told me to leave certain groups and to say goodbye to certain employers because people do evil 
And then they want to keep you bound in evil. They want to take from you. They don't want to give to you. They want to lie on you (laughs) or about you. But they don't want you around for long. Come on. Come on. Some of you all know that there are people that God himself has told you using various signs, wonders, miracles, you name it, to stay away from. But yet when you are down and out, you pick up the phone and you call them and they tell you some crazy stuff, some stupid stuff, some stuff that doesn't even sound a little bit righteous and true. And then you're back to square one again, feeding off of them, depending on them, um, Doing some things that go against scripture. Some of you all check out Galatians 5. You know who you are. You know what you're doing. And so what you do is you gravitate to positive material in the hopes of feeling better about yourself rather than dealing with the things that are binding you. So you get an emotional high for a little bit and you seem like you want to do what's right. And then around the wheel we go. Back to square one again, doing the same dysfunctional, toxic, unhealthy type of stuff that got you all messed up in the first place. Just sit back and think about those things. You see, what have I done recently that has kept me bound or that has encouraged Uh Uh-oh, listen to this. That has encouraged someone else's dysfunction. That has encouraged someone else to stay in a cage. I chose the birdcage on Tell Me Mother You're Sorry, the e-book. Because you get a lot of folks that are still bound by their parents. Or bound to their parents. or, Or placed in cages by parents and husbands and wives and girlfriends and boyfriends and others even the unsuspecting teachers can emotionally and physically bind folk i don't want you going over here i don't want you going to that school i don't want you being a part of that group you got to stay with us you're great you're wonderful you're good but i'm not getting anything out of this any longer oh that's okay we still want you but You're not doing anything for me. Oh, that's okay. You know, sooner or later, there's going to be some opportunities. You just stay here. But, 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 and they don't want to hear it. And so then there's some folks that come along and they say, you need to stay there. You need to, you know, really consider going there. Oh, yeah. And I really want you to get all that you possibly can out of this, that, and the other. Okay, but are you going to pay the bill? Um, uh, are you going to be there to hold my hand when times get rough? Uh, I got, I, uh, you see? So they're willing to push, push folks in a direction where they don't have enough money, they don't have enough time, they don't have enough patience, they don't have enough energy, they don't have enough passion, they don't have enough anything. Rather than to set them free and let them explore and let them learn and let them grow. Nope, I'm going to direct my son to the college. Even though he has specifically said, that's not where I want to go. I actually want to go to a two-year business school, trade school, what have you. Because that's not for me. College is not for everyone. That's not for me. But my son, we come from a long line of, you see? And then the parent gets angry when the child drops out and doesn't want to finish. The parent gets angry because the child is having fun in the school doing what he or she wants. They're not mentally prepared and they're spending a bunch of time playing games in their room instead of going to classes. They're spending a bunch of time having sex with this one and that one and not focus on the studies, drinking, partying, having just a... Time of their life when they could have done all of that without spending up the parents' money. But, you know, what do we know, right? Because the world tells us that you should do this and you should do that. And so and so, they are doing it and their children this and their children that. 
we got to stop. We got to stop listening to the marketers. They're going to keep on pulling money from you. We got to stop listening to the folks that got special interests and special benefits when they promote certain things. Okay. To you. Next thing you know, you're bound. You're bound to a contract. I got mixed up in something. And when I look back, everything was strategic in how uh, the individual sold the product. Everything caught me when I was tired. It was the evening. I was busy doing some other stuff. The person uh, started talking about how the product could help me out. Made sure that there was nobody around that um, I respected that could influence me not to uh, spend as much money as I did. Oh, the whole thing. It was a setup. And God, he sent someone prior to that situation to say, do you really want to do this? And me, I said, yes. Now, of course, you know, you do get your benefits, right? But eh, it could have been one less product. Could have been, you know, some more money in my pocket. But that's how the enemy works. He wants to bind you before he takes from you. Right? Because if you're running, I can't catch you. But if I can make you... Stay in a situation, stand still long enough so that I can wrap some cord around you <laughs> and keep you from going here and keep you from going there. Then, hey, that's what I'm going to do, right? If I'm on the side of the enemy. But if I am righteous and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and I'm listening to the wisdom of God, I'm going to catch you while you're running, run alongside of you and tell you, you might want to stop at some point so that I can take the chains that are around your ankles as you're running. Come on. And then once we get to a safe place, rather than wrap some cord around you, I direct you to some help. I direct you to some freedom. I direct you to a plan. That's what quality people do. That's what good friends do. That's what good parents do. Okay? That's what good partners do. Good partners don't bind you. They don't put a bunch of mess upon you and then throw you out into the ocean with an anchor wrapped around your ankles and watch you slowly go down to the bottom of the sea, never to rise back up again. But you got some folks that that's just what they're doing because they cannot stand the fact that you are free. They're bound to their situation. They're bound to the struggle, to the depression, to the upset, to the bitterness, to the jealousy, to the resentments, to the guilt, to the nobody does anything for me. And I'm always they are self-deceived, thinking that they're helpful, thinking that they've gotten other folks and did this and did that and freed them from things. And the truth of the matter is, is that they have not. They have not God. Come on. God touched my mind and moved on my spirit to create. God was there when man said, I don't care. God put his loving arms around me when man said he didn't want to hug me. God was there when man said, I'm not going to give you. But then he moved on man's spirit to give me anyway. God was there when people said that you made the wrong decision. We don't want you coming around. We don't like your type. God was there. God is there in your situation. God is there when we go out and talk to others and convince them or at least attempt to convince them that their situation is emotionally and physically as well as spiritually binding. And it's time to be set free. It is time to set the captives free. If you are here at YouTube NM Enterprise 7, it is time. It is time, the Lord says, to be set free from all emotionally, physically, and spiritually toxic.
people, places, and things. Toxic people, places, and things. It is time. If you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I suggest you do it right now where you sit, where you stand. In the name of Jesus. May this listener be set free. Be set free from an emotionally, physically, and spiritually binding situation. I ask, Father God, that you will just touch this individual in a great and mighty way. That as he or she walks with you, that this individual will see evidence and proof that you are real. And that you care about them and that you love them unconditionally. I pray that you will fill them up. From the top of their head to the soles of their feet with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. All you have to do is say, I accept Jesus into my life. And I want him to be a part of my life. I want to be guided by him. I want to receive the Holy Spirit. Get into his word. Sure, man has changed various scriptures. Sure, man has fought up against the word of God. Sure, there are some things that you're saying to yourself when you read it. Really? (sighs) Messing around with God's word. But the wisdom is there. The Holy Ghost will instruct you over those scriptures to read what applies to your life right now. Just give them some time. Like you do when you are telling people that you're going to give them a call back. And you do. Give God some time. Turn off the electronics. Get away from some folk. And allow the Holy Ghost to move upon you so that you can read the word. Pray before you touch that Bible. Ask the Lord to provide you with the wisdom to understand. And start applying what you have learned in your day-to-day life. And if it's too much or you're not ready to sit in front of that Bible, go to a church and allow the man of God or woman of God to read the Bible to you. And to explain. I thank you so much for listening. And as always. To God be the glory. Please do check the description box. For anything related to your situation.